Think of this just as one little section of water near the coast. And so on this side, the coast is going to continue on to the continent. So this is all land over here. And on this side, this is more water. So this is going into the open expanse. So we can think of this almost like the California coast. So this is California, and this is going farther out into the Pacific. And so the first thing I wanted to illustrate is upwelling. And so we talked about an upwelling, and the perfect example we can see in this chart is basically when these large trade winds are going offshore. So they're going from shore and they're heading offshore. And so it's basically, you can see these trade winds along the equator, the winds are blowing away from the actual continents, either North America or South America. So Will's gonna be our wind. So go ahead and grab the nozzle. I want to add our marker so we can trace exactly how the welling up or down is occurring. Let me add a bit more. I don't want to go nuts or we're not going to see the next part of the demo. So we want that blue to head down towards the bottom. And so we talked about last class, what happens in upwelling? It's on there, it's on the board. So we drew out our different curves, of temperature, nutrients, and carbon dioxide. What does upwelling do for us? Anybody? Yes? Well, what is it doing to the actual column of water? Yes? It brings it up, right? Hence the name upwelling. So those curves that we drew, we're actually going to bring that stuff, that depth in those curves, up towards the surface. So you guys ready to see it in action? Here comes our wind. So just a wind, the breeze blowing, across the surface of the water from the land. So it takes a while for the friction to actually move that surface water. Now watch what happens at depth. So we see that cold water at depth. It's out of sunlight, so none of our plants and our plants can use it. And it's going to travel along the bottom until it gets to the land. And finally what we're doing is we're pulling the surface away from the top of that water, so it has to come up from depth to fill in that hole that we've created here. Does that make sense to everybody? So we kind of lost our tracer, but basically you should see a giant cell of water that's flowing like this. And so just like the name implies, we're upwelling. We're bringing all that dark, cold water has lots of nutrients, because nothing's been able to use it, it's out of sunlight, and has lots of CO2. And so when we get upwelling, we're replenishing that, so our plankton are, are basically our algae in the water, we need that sunlight, nutrients, CO2, to finally get that stuff. So this creates a lot of growth. So when we look at our chart, we can actually see all of our areas of major upwelling here. So along the west coast of South America, we see tons of chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is what all plants need for the synthesize. Same with the west coast of Africa. And so this demo is exactly what's going on in around the world. So I'm going to try and set this in here so we don't upset. Okay. Quick win, quick. So now he's going to blow a wind from the surface. He's going to blow it on shore. And now you can see this down low. So we're taking warm water that's been in sunlight. The plankton's been using all that, so it's low in nutrients and low in carbon dioxide. It's going to actually shove it down. So what that wind is doing is it's piling up near the shore. When we pile up water, it's going to actually drop it down. And so now you can see it down low along the coast and it's going to get pushed and go back out to sea. So this downwelling is what actually makes the water warmer at depth, low in nutrients, and low CO2. And so that demo shows our downwelling of that wind coming from open ocean, blowing the water so it actually hits the land and has to go down. Does that make sense everybody? So that would look a lot better, I think. So give our wind a round of applause. So hopefully that clarifies things a little bit.